Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is a series on creating a breakout game in Phaser 3 with Matter JS. Now, in the last part, we left off by adding this lives counter, and we're going to leave that as is for now. We can also launch the ball at different angles depending on where the paddle is when you start. So, to keep going with this breakout game, we're going to add some blocks for you to actually break. And we did that in the last video where the ball falls through the bottom, we reset it and you lose life. So let's make some blocks. So now we have this block PNG. This is our block asset. Let's go to game and let's make our blocks at the top here. So we'll just make one. This dot matter dot add dot image and Let's say we just put it dead center for now and just say 200 pixels down and it's called block. And we also know that it should be static like our paddle. Okay. Oh, maybe it's not called block. I don't know. Right, we did not preload it. So let's go here and preload it. We only have the asset. We did not load it. Image block. Assets block.png. Let's just check. Yep, that was right. Okay. Game. So now it should collide with it. Great. Boom. Collides with it on multiple planes, sides. Um, okay. So that's the block. Now we can also change its color. I think we do set tint. Uh, let's say we make this. I don't know, red. And there's a red block, maybe too red. You can always just adjust the colors you want it to be and break out the blocks of different colors. And then you can uh, just tint it various different colors. You can go to a color picker and then find the right color. Uh, okay, so that's tinting. So that's creating one block. Now one block is not exactly all that much fun, but we're gonna use one block for now to keep things simple. So that's the block. So now when the ball hits the block, it needs to um, go away. So let's just say const block. And then, so when the ball hits the block, let's just go down here. This dot ball dot set on collide. Set on collide. Let's see, there's a callback function. So we're gonna, let's make a function here. Private one, handle, ball collide and let's see what does it actually give us a function let's go here back to the phaser docs let's just see what we actually get here so we're doing physics matter image set on collide so we get a callback is sent a matter dot collision data object okay Let's say data, and this should be phaser dot dot types dot physics dot matter dot matter collision data console dot dot dir. So dir is just another uh, method you can call similar to log. It just logs out objects better. So this dot handle ball collide. Okay. Let's see, let's see what we got. So let's just see. Okay, collided with something, and this is the object. So it's got active contents, contacts, body A, body B. So let's see, body A is an image. Inertia infinity, body A is probably the ball. Body B, also an image. And inertia is also infinity. Let's see which one is static. Okay, if you do dot game object, you'll see that's an image. And let's see. So since we don't know who's who, or it's too hard to tell who's who rather, let's go ahead and do set data. Does that return a game object? Yes. So we're gonna say type 
that's the key and the type is going to be block so this is using the i think data manager um yeah the game objects data manager to specify a specific thing on it so that we can then check it so we know data has body a body b right just check okay so we're going to go with some object destructuring again not void body a body b data let's see data dot get data that game body a body b dot body type dot body type dot game object why no game object it's definitely on it one sec let's see now it says body type but clearly it's not quite a body type mm. okay dot body type dot body type well this should be it should have something no oh not paying attention body a game object okay so if body a dot game object well let's just log it out actually so we don't know who's who dot to say you exist dot come on so let's see what type is this any okay const uh, go a which is game object a as phaser dot game objects dot just use game object go a dot get data type so let's just see console.log here what body a is body a is a block okay good to know okay so body a is a block so now if it is a block the block should disappear that's what we're doing here um when it collides the block should go away so if we do go a dot destroy or remove let's go with destroy remove from scene yes please Oop. oh well just to make sure that it is in fact gone. That body is undefined. Let's see. Ah, okay. So body A is probably also sometimes the the, the paddle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if go A dot get data type. If it's not a block, so we're only going to handle block collisions here. If it's not a block, don't do anything. All right, that block is gone. Now it hits the wall. Go A is no. Right, so it hit the wall and the wall doesn't have a game object. That is why a game object is sometimes undefined. That's what this question mark means. If body A dot game object, if not. These are early outs that we're using here. Um, if there's no game object, don't do anything because it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, so we're just going to need body B either. Body B appears to be the ball. Okay, so that's good. Early out here, we uh, get the game object. We check that the game object is a block type. If it's not, don't do anything. If it is a block and we hit it, we destroy the block. Cool. So now we have one block. That was easy, and, but that's not that, that a game doesn't make. Uh, so we need to add more blocks. Now there's a few ways to do this. You can add this all in code, and that would be fine if you prefer, if you like doing it that way. So let's just try that, and we'll do it as an array uh, so that you can see. So let's do, we're gonna make just, just a row across, just for simplicity's sake here. For let i equal zero, and we're just going to make, I don't know, let's see, four blocks. That's about five. That's a nice round number. Okay. 
and then const blocks, and it, the blocks is going to be a phaser dot physics dot matter dot image array, or we're making an array, and then we just make everyone red. Const block blocks dot push block, and let's see. So that's so I'm going to make the x different. So not good, right? Yes. X, let's just start it. I'm going to pick an arbitrary number here. 128. 128. Uh, okay. So this is X. Great. Now X plus equals block dot width. Okay. Box. Fantastic. Oh, well, I guess we don't really need to put this into a list. Okay, we're going to put it into a list just so that we can check that all the blocks have disappeared. But we're going to make this a, prop, a um, class property. Blocks. And so let's just take this. Okay. Because we need to know when there's no more blocks left, effectively, that the you have won the level. Okay, so block, push, grid, so do, do, go. Okay, uh, let's just do, now if we need to remove this block from our block array. So this.blocks.find index, let's say, uh, let's see, block, block, equals go a const that's going to be the index if the index is greater than or equal to zero we're going to remove it if it's for some reason i couldn't find it just don't do anything this dot blocks so we're going to do splice and we're going to say start at this and next remove one and so there's our four blocks let's just do console dot this dot block. So we should see when we get rid of one block, uh, we should have, so there's five right now. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get rid of, oh, find the next, this dot blocks is undefined. Why that? Why would that be blocks? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now here is where we have a JavaScript uh, scope issue. Now in a lot of phaser arcade physics callbacks, your uh, one of the parameters you can pass in is the um, this to set the context of we, there, there's a context parameter that you can pass this to or whatever your context should be. And this one doesn't have it. All you have is a callback function. And since we have a class method here that we're using, the context is going to be whatever it is when this method is called. And it may not be the scene, even though that's where this method lives. So there are a few ways we can do this. We can use an arrow function here and then call our class uh, method, or we can do dot bind this so that whenever this handle ball collide callback is called, the context will be this or whatever you bind it to. Okay. Boom. So now there's four. Now there's three. So we are removing the uh, we're removing the blocks. Let's see. Let's go all the way to zero. That should do it. I did not mean to intend to do that. Boom. Okay. So now it's zero. And in this case, just like for lives uh, previously. When lives goes to zero, we go to game over. When the number of blocks goes to zero, we'll go to win. Now we're gonna create that scene in a later part. But we have everything we need to, uh, we have everything in place to do that later. So now creating a level using code and in this fashion, like making a line, like horizontal row, not too hard, pretty easy. You can do some interesting stuff, stuff like this. Keep in place them one at a time and then add your blocks you created to the array. That would be fine as well. But it is not uh, super great. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to use Tiled to design your levels and then load in your level as a tile map 
created in Tiled.